Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Dick Coding here and this is another video for the integrating APIs with Django 3.2 playlist. So if you've been following along, you'll know now that I'm building a whole bunch of Django apps and I'm integrating different APIs, really popular APIs into these apps so that hopefully developers can use this code to capitalize on the APIs in their own projects. So in this video, we are going to be using the Spoontacular API. So you can make a call to Spoontacular using their API and it can return uh, different ingredients, uh, different menu items, products, and things like that really. It's very, very handy if that's indeed what you're looking for for your project. But before I jump into it, if you'd like to support Dig Coding, there's a link in the description below for our Patreon page. Any pledges are massively welcome. Also, there's also another link in the description that will take you to our Dig Coding website. We've now got a page there with all of our affiliate programs. So if you're looking to save a few quid here and there on different tech products um, or what have you, then go to that page. There's loads of codes, there's loads of links. Save some money, which is great. Right, so look at my screen. Uh, you can see here that it opens straight up on GitHub. This is the, uh, the link to this repository, again, is in the description below. Um, and it, it has a readme file uh, with, with instructions on what to do with this. Uh, I've also got the spoontacular.com uh, website open. So this is what we're going to be in integrating today. So I'm using Sublime Text. This is Sublime Text and this is the project. I've already got it on my local machine, which is great. So we won't fire up a server just yet. I'll just walk you through some of the files. Actually, no, I won't. I'm gonna show, show you the app and then we'll walk through. Okay, so this is the directory on my local machine. Typical, the CMD is there, right. So work on did Django Spoontacular API and then Python manage.py run server. Okay, that's working. Uh, I'm just going to pause quickly because I need to add my API key and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, great. I've now added the API so it should now work. So if I go to uh, browser and using Chrome here and I'll just go incognito which is control shift N and go local host. We don't want that. And it should open up. There we have it, right. So it has a home page, it has a results page, nothing else. It doesn't have, it has got a SQL like database just because that's what comes uh, out the box of Django, but we don't use it. And it's just got a form here. It allows you to select one of these different options and then you add a search query. And that's all it does. We then use requests, which is in the requirements, uh, to make a call to the API. We get the, J, uh, we get the response, we convert it to JSON and then we do something with it and we return it in the results file. So let's click on products and search for Apple. Click submit. And then what it does, it um, opens up the results page and it shows the ID, the name, and the image of the uh, response. Okay, and if we go back into home, go to uh, recipes, click Apple, and there you go. So it's just making this four different API calls that we're making. If you go into uh, the docs on Spoontacular, they have got a whole bunch of API calls that you can capitalize on. I've just done very, very basic ones just so you can see how the integration works, but you know, fill your boots, have a look at the docs, change the, uh, um, the code that I've written and you'll be able to do a whole bunch of things. You can see here, you've got exclude cuisines, you've got, um, what have we got, we've got get recipe taste by ID. All of these, I keep scrolling, you can see there's so many of them. Um, and they can do some really, really funky stuff. So they are the docs, uh, the link to the docs will be in the description, but it's spoontacular.com forward slash food dot API slash docs. You will need to sign up and get an API key, okay? But let's jump into the code. So I've opened it straight up. This is the uh, repository that I've um, got on my machine here. You've got a set, settings.py file with importing OS. So I'm just gonna go through what I've changed from the, um, when, when you start a new project in Django, what I've had to add to make this work. So we've imported OS. 
We've um, started an app called Main, and I'm including that in the installed apps. I'm not doing anything else until you get right to the bottom of the page here, and I've changed the language code because I'm in the UK, so ENGB. We've added some uh, variables here, so static files does, static URL is there already, but we've added static root as well because we're bringing in uh, our logo and um, CSS files and things like that. And we've got a variable here called API key. So you will need that API key, add it to that variable, save it and it should all fire up. In the urls.py, so urls conf, we've brought in include from the django.urls bought in settings from Django Conf and we bought in static from Django Conf URL static. We've got that because we've, we've, had a, um, we've got a setting here. So this allows us to manage um, static files in the project. Um, URLs also, we're including the main URLs from the main app. So, and this is the main app here. So the static directory here, you can see we've got a branding directory that's got my logo and whatnot in there main CSS, which is which is here. We won't go through that. It's the same as, as all of the um, CSS files in all of the apps that I've got on GitHub. So uh, no changes there. We won't waste your time. So this is the main app. Yeah, so the main app here. So we've got admin, no change, apps, no change, mix-ins. We have got changes that I'll go through that in a second. Models, tests, URLs. So we've got the two URLs as home and we've got results. So we then have the views for those two URLs. We are bringing in mix-ins. So we've got form errors, we don't really need that. Redirect params, we do need that because we're using redirect params uh, for this API call. Um, and API mix-ins. So this is the index view, this is the home view. Um, so if um, in the HTML we've got a form uh, and when submitted, that's why I've got if request method equals post. Otherwise, it's a get request. The get request just renders the index HTML. The post request takes the, the, the data from the form. And in this case, we've got a, um, a variable called cat. So we're using request.post get cat. If there isn't one, it's none. Uh, and same with query. So unless we've got a category and a query, it will just render the index pages as it normally would. So it only does something and redirects to the results page if there is a category and a, and a query. I hope you understand what I'm trying to do there. We've got a redirect params, that's in the mixing. So that essentially allows us to redirect to a different URL and append some parameters. And in this case, it's a query and a category. Um, so we'll, get, we'll look at that in the mixing in a second. And then we've got a results view. Again, we're getting the, but in this case it's request.get, not request.post. So we're getting the category and uh, query from the parameter that we're passing through. Actually, if I open up, there you go. So you can see here, you've got uh, localhost slash results, then, and then you've got this parameter here. So question mark cat equals query equals. That's how we're managing those um, searches. Uh, go back into Sublime Text. So if we've got cat and query, uh, then we do something else we just redirect to home. So the, the results page will only show if you've got those two parameters. Okay, so uh, if there is a cat and a query, then we call the API mixin, which we'll go through in a second. We get the data, which is all part of the class that's in the mixin. We don't need print results. That was me testing around, playing around earlier. And then we create a context dictionary with results, cat and query, and we pass that through and render out the, re uh, the results HTML. So that's what we're doing. It's pretty standard there. What is good is the mixins. So we're um, importing requests in JSON as you normally would if you're making an API. We've got the forms, form error function, not really using that. I use that when I'm um, doing Django, using Django model forms. We're not using any in this uh, app, but uh, there you go, you've got it there anyway. And then we've got redirect params. So this is what we're doing, we're using URL encode, and that's what creates that string that is appended when we redirect. So um, yeah, we, we get in the uh, URL equal quarks.getURL and the params, the response, and it's creating a string there and returning it as a response, appending it to the uh, redirect, which is in the views. And then we've got the API mixing. So in all of these videos, we'll have an API mixing. They'll just differ slightly. The URL that we're calling will differ slightly. Some will have headers, some won't. This is a nice, easy one. You just construct a URL based on the query and the category, and Bob's your uncle, all is good. So uh, we've got an init function or a method, and it gets the query and the cat, and it creates those. 
Uh, then we've got a get data. This is what we're calling in the view, if you remember. We've got a URL dict. And the reason I've got that is because the calls, the, the URL um, that you're calling in this API slightly changes depending on what category we're looking at. So ingredients, menu items, and products all look at food, um, then category and search. Re recipes looks at recipes slash complex search, so slightly different. Uh, but it creates that string. And then on a URL, we've got the standard URL uh, format at the start here. Then we use an F string, so we're creating a string here. We're adding in the query string from the dict using self.cat as the key. And then we've got query equals, and then we're using the, um, the keyword uh, self.query. And then we've got, at the end of it, we're appending API key equals settings.api key. That's the API key that you got in your settings file. We're then using requests to get that information, saving it in a variable called R. If the status is 200, so if it's a, it's a good request, i.e. you're not getting a 404 or 400 or anything like that, then we do something. Otherwise, we return nothing at all. So we've got a try. So we're looking for, um, this is because the response that you get from the API uh, differs slightly. So the, the dictionary that you're, the JSON that you get slightly di is different. So on some of them, you're looking for ingredients, menu items or products. On another one, you're looking for results. So we're doing a try accept. The accept, if there's a key error, so if we can't find ingredients, menu items or products, then we're looking for results or we return none. Not much going on but it does the trick actually. And then we're turning it back to the view. Save. Um, bu -bu 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 what we could actually do here, which I haven't done is, yeah, what we do is um, if results, because uh, we're returning none if there's no results. So if there's, if there's results, then we do this. Else, or it won't do, doing if results there we go we don't need the else there so if results it will do something if it won't it will default and it will just redirect back to home so that's what we'll do there I'll save that and I will update github because that's not in github currently so that's it that's the app that's all it's doing we are um, just Constructing a URL in a mix-in, and we've got, got the two views. Um, like I say, Spoontacular has got a whole range of different APIs and queries that you can make. So go through the docs, work out what you're trying to achieve, and hopefully use this code to be your kind of um, foundation to do that on. So thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been interesting. If you uh, well, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe, please like, and share this content. If you want to support us, the Patreon link is in the description below, and also link to the Decoding website where we've got some affiliate programs uh, where you can save some money. Happy days! Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.